All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Friday. Happy Friday to everyone out there. April 5th, we have a jam-packed NBA slate to dive into in today's video. Like we always do, we're going to go through each and every one of these games. I'll give you my lean on the spread. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any player prop leans I have in the game as well. But as always, keep an eye on the pinned comment. That is where all of my final plays, so what I'm actually rolling with myself, those plays are going to live there. Keep an eye on the pinned comment of this video. In terms of last night, the good news is we hit our only one unit play of the day, which is lucky because I kind of was cursing that out after Jonathan Kaminga got ruled out. But still, the Warriors kind of show up um, and dominate. But we had the Kings plus five and the Kings money line split out a full unit into half a unit on each. They looked good to start the game, and then nothing comes through. And then De'Aaron Fox under 25 and a half points. Quarter unit play there. Looked terrible. Absolutely looked terribly. I think he had like 16 first quarter points. He only finished with 29, so I'm sitting there being like, ah, I wasn't that far off, but terrible, terrible read. So a one and three night record wise, but honestly, it's nothing that's going to kill us when it, uh, you know, in, in the wash here because of that full unit win we had on the Warriors. But let's change up the vibes here. We got some damn good news. Our ride of the day. Number two in a row here from Wayne. Clay Thompson over three and a half first quarter points. He had... Well, my hands don't go up that high. He had 11 first quarter points against the Rockets yesterday. Shout out to the Splash Bro there and shout out to Wayne. If you guys don't know what the ride of the day is, all you got to use is hashtag ride of the day in the comments. I'm jumping on board with one person's play, giving you a shout out just like Wayne gets in the next video, win or loss. Also shouting you out over on my Twitter at EvGuyBoston. Make sure to follow me there. All my socials will be rotating right around here throughout the video. We got tons of other content on each of those socials. So make sure to go follow me there, especially Instagram, posting a lot more player prop content but yeah if you hit your ride of the day we continue to ride with you so looking forward to seeing what Wayne has for us today and I believe it'll be going for his third win in a row here but guys let's buckle up hit that subscribe button hit that like button the vibes are high on a Friday uh, we got a bunch of games to dive into some of them are crap games but uh, nonetheless let's do it here we're starting off with one that you can make the argument it's not the best game here uh, Charlotte taking on the magic here Charlotte at home total sitting at 12 uh, excuse me uh, spread at Charlotte plus 12 total sitting at 205 and a half last time these two teams played which was right about you know um, less than a month ago but about a month ago Orlando wins that one 112 to 92 um, prior to that uh, they played about a month ago and they won 101 to 89 um, then earlier this year they won 130 to 117 so Orlando has clearly matched up very well against this team and Orlando has been playing um, fairly well against bad teams uh, which I think that we can classify Charlotte as a bad team as of right now so I lean towards Orlando minus the 12 it's not my favorite spot um in this game in fact a couple player props I would put over that in terms of priority but yeah for right now and lean purposes I do lean towards Orlando you're not going to get me to the Charlotte side of things from a uh, total perspective I don't necessarily see this being a high scoring game but 205 seems a little bit too low um as bad as Charlotte is and can be uh, and as slow as Orlando can truly play I still think Orlando's going to get everything they want at the hoop so yeah I mean I might slightly lean towards the over in this spot which is crazy to say because Charlotte has struggled to get to triple digits as of late like they scored 86 points against the or 85 whatever it was against the Portland defense how are they going to get to even triple digits against Orlando I'm not sure but like I said my two favorite plays in this game are going to be player props and we'll jump in over to the outlier screen guys if you don't know what outlier is it's an amazing sports betting research tool literally my favorite player prop tool out there they're making constant advancements and additions to it as well which is awesome um, but go check it out i have a link in the pinned comment seven days free for this tool first play here is going to be miles bridges over two and a half assists he's hit this in eight of his last 10 he's hit it in four straight games over his last five games averaging 5.6 potential assists over his last 10 averaging over six potential assists. So I love that 50-50 rule that I like. 50% of your potential assists should turn into real assists. And head-to-head, -head, you got to love it here too, right? They played three times this year. He's played 30-plus minutes in each. He had three assists, then five assists. From a potential assist perspective, five and seven the last couple times they played. Um, and what I do like about this is, obviously, if we flip over here and look at uh, the shooting zones, Orlando's going to really love to kind of clog both the paint, you know, outside the restricted area and in the restricted area, right? Where does Miles Bridges like to go and score? In the paint, obviously, right? So if we look at him and say, okay, well, he likes to score in the paint, 
which he does. If we fl uh, flash over here, 42% of his shots are going to come from right there in uh, the restricted area. If he likes to score in the paint, then we're looking at uh, a guy that's going to have a tough time scoring down there. He's probably going to have to pass it out or at least pass the ball more than he's used to. The negative is, is that our guys, uh, you know, for Charlotte going to make a bunch of shots. Not necessarily. Um, let's flash back over to our model here. You can see here, regardless of Orlando's defense, that's their uh, the color coding on the bottom. Charlotte, terrible uh, from above the break. Terrible from the left corner. Not great from the, the right. Like They're just not a great jump shooting team. So I do think uh, in this spot, we're going to hope for some uh, you know shots to fall, but uh, I, I almost hope that you know we just get lucky. And we, we, only can, we just need to get lucky like three times. So if this is like a four and a half Line, something like that I probably wouldn't be looking at it but um, I don't mind it at two and a half now we're sticking in the assist category in the same game Wendell Carter Jr. over one and a half assists he's hit in four straight games he's averaging 3.2 potential assists which you don't necessarily love to see but his last three games he's averaging just over four potential assists which is good for that 50 50 rule and how about this Last six games against the Hornets here, he has absolutely been hitting this line. He's averaged almost three assists per game against them, dating back to October 2022. Last time they played, he had three assists on three potential assists. I like this spot as well. What I will say is that he absolutely burned us uh, the last time we took his over to assists. He had one in like the first quarter and then nothing. Uh, so hopefully we're off to a better start with him today. But I like the player props more than anything else in this game, to be honest. By the way, guys, I forgot to mention, Miles Bridges is listed as questionable. So obviously, if he doesn't play, uh, you know, even if we roll with that, it'll get voided. But I do want you to know that he is um, listed as questionable. So if you don't see his props out there, or you don't see him playing, that is why a lot of guys on the Charlotte team, like so many guys are listed as game time decisions, uh, almost like they're one through seven. So just keep an eye on the injury report. Weird things are happening as we close out the year. But I did want to jump in here as we were in post. And I wanted to mention that, yeah, he is listed as questionable. But um, if he plays, we still like that. All right, we got the Pacers taking on the Thunder here in this spot. Shea Gilgis-Alexander and Jalen Williams both listed as doubtful. So if they play, that's obviously going to change things. But uh, they haven't looked tremendous without these guys. In fact, they've looked pretty uh, bad without both of them. And then you flash and look at just how they've done without Shea. Kind of hit or miss. Indiana have been sort of like a win-loss, win-loss, win-loss type of a team. They've played some good teams. Uh, I don't want to lay the five and a half points here, but I think I have to if Shea and Jalen Williams are both out. Miles Turner's also listed on the injury report here uh, for Indiana, so obviously that would be a big blow. So this could almost be a moot point of a game where we don't even uh, play. I think he missed last game as well. So if all those guys are injured, I'm not willing to just roll the dice randomly when we have a bunch of games to look at today. But if he plays, Shea and and Jalen don't play, uh, it's probably going to be a, a, a Pacers spot for me here. Um, and then from a total perspective, uh, yes, I think these two teams can run, but I think that total is a little bit too high. I think they get to 229 to 231, but 234, I'll take the under here. So give me the under in that spot. And then from a player prop perspective, obviously we have tons of injury news that we're waiting on. So we'll kind of be patient and wait that one out before we jump into anything. All right, Washington hosting Portland in this one. Kyle Kuzma still out. Uh, Denny Adjaz is uh, Avdabadu is on the injury report as well as is Rashawn Holmes. So a couple injuries to note here. Um, Portland still starting a bunch of nobodies, I guess, outside of DeAndre Ayton and Scoot Henderson there. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll take Portland. Give me, give me the points in this spot. I don't think we make that a final play, but I'm not going to lay points with Washington, especially with how injured they have been as of late. So uh, a reluctant lean towards Portland here. Um, I'll also, in terms of a total, slightly consider the under because, yes, we have a couple bad defenses on our hand here and terrible transition defense, but neither one of these teams are like prolific in transition and scoring. Definitely not Portland. Literally one of the worst transition scoring teams. Now, Washington will play with a fast pace, and I get that, uh, but the efficiency is kind of what I'm talking about here. I don't think that they go out there and score a boatload of points, um, especially if I think Portland keeps this game close. So I'll lean towards the under as well as Portland here, but again, I said there's a few garbage games on today's slate. This definitely is one of them, all right? But what is not garbage is the sleeper app. And you guys, if you sign up today, you get a few things. You get two free squares. Steph Curry, 0.5 points, and then Spencer Strider, 0.5 strikeouts if you are a baseball fan as well. And you also get your first deposit matched over on Sleeper if you use the link in the pinned comment. So make sure to go check that out, guys. Again, you could throw in 20, 50, 100. I think you could throw in 500 bucks still. They're going to double what you put in, and you can play with that. And what I love about Sleeper is all you have to do is combine two or more player props into a single slip. The more you win, the more you get paid out, and their payouts are cool because each and every player 
play has its own multiplier. So you like a guy's long shot odds and whatnot, you will reap the benefits if he does cash. And what I really like is the alternate lines that they have just introduced. Very cool stuff. Obviously, um, I'm, I like this app because I'm showing you guys on YouTube Shorts, Instagram, and TikTok all the time the slips that I'm posting. So, you know, the proof's in the pudding there. I'm not promoting something that I don't use myself. Sleeper is an awesome app. I'm confident that you'll like it if you try it out. Use that link in the pinned comment today. Get these free squares. Like, it's a two-for-one type of a deal. Go check it out, guys. Sleeper, again, that link is in the pinned comment. Let's jump back into the slate here. Celtics taking on the Kings in this spot. The, King, uh, the Kings are on a back-to-back. -back. Obviously, we had them last night. And the Kings on back-to-backs this season... 30% cover rate. So 70% of their back-to-back -back games, they have ended up just kind of uh, struggling here. Now, the problem is this spread is pretty damn high at 10. Um, but you know what? The Celtics, as of late, have been playing good basketball. They've covered, if you date back all of their games the last 10, they've covered this in seven of their last 10. Sacramento has covered it in 10, uh, excuse me, eight of their last 10 if they were 10 point dogs in the last 10 games. But again, we're looking at this saying, okay, you know what? Back to back, you know, who knows who's playing? Right now, Derek White, Jalen Brown are listed as game time decisions. Um, if they don't play, obviously, we're not going to pull the trigger on 10, but uh, I don't know if we pull the trigger anyways. I do think the Celtics win this game, though. Even though they are on kind of cruise control, they have the one seed locked up. They don't need to risk it. They could play sort of lax lackadaisical, which I would get it if they did. Uh, they beat OKC by 35. You know what I mean? I think they're still trying to make a statement like, yeah, we're not just going to take our foot off the gas. Like, we know we want to play good basketball heading into the playoffs. In terms of the total here, you have two teams that really have not been pushing the pace as of late. Sacramento on back-to-backs. Uh, only 38% of the games have gone over. So uh, quick math here. It looks like 62% of their games have gone under on back-to-backs. And when the South Celtics have um, been at home here. It's a 50-50 uh, over-under rate. So I'm going to lean slightly towards the under here because Sacramento not scoring the ball all too hot as of late. Um, they're a top 10 team overall, but um, on the road, they're a little bit different of an animal in terms of, you know, being a smaller animal. So give me the slight under in this spot as well. From a player prop perspective, uh, you know, I, I don't mind looking at Derek White. The guy just continues to to uh, amaze. Now, he was off to a decent start against OKC. Ends up, you know, playing, uh, I think it was like 31 minutes where he's been getting 36 plus minutes as of late. So if he plays a lot of minutes, I do like his shot here. Uh, two straight games against Sacramento. One being this year, he's had over 20 points. And I don't mind his over 24 and a half PRA. So keep an eye on the pin comment. That could be a final play, but he's listed as questionable right now. We want to make sure he's playing, obviously. All right, we got Chicago taking on the Knicks here. Knicks just beat the Kings, so they are on a back-to-back, -back, and that is kind of what worries me. From a back-to-back -back perspective for them, they've only covered in 36% of games, went on a back-to-back, -back. and Chicago, 56% of their games when they have a rest advantage over their opponent, which they do in this case. Their last game was four days ago. Um, they've covered in 56% of games, so that's worrisome to me. But this should be a Knicks game all day long. Like, this should be a game in which you have um, anything you can do, I can do better type of thing uh, for the Knicks. And that spread is pretty damn low. So uh, I don't necessarily see any injuries that are news. I mean, Josh Hart's listed as a maybe. So, uh, But also on Rotowire's listed as very likely to play. So we'll see how that plays out. OG Ananobi's still out. It sucks that Julius Randle's out for the year. Like, that kind of kills a lot of the Knicks' hopes. But... Uh, Deuce McBride's playing well. DiVincenzo, we know, is playing well. Brunson's playing well. They just got Mitch Robinson back. Like, this team is pretty well put together even without Randall. So give me the Knicks in this spot. I like the under as well. I think that this is a grinded out type of a game. You have two teams that are definitely not going to try and push the pace. And uh, the the Knicks have covered in 64% of their games uh, in terms of uh, under uh, when on a back-to-back. -back. So I like that spot. And I just can't see Chicago trying to up the tempo and push the pace because that's not really their game either. Uh, so yeah, give me the under in this spot. No player props are jumping off the page to me here either. All right, we got the Rockets taking on the Heat here. So the Rockets, you know, it's probably unlikely that they get into the playoff spot, but they're still going to try. But the Heat are actually working their way out of even a play-in situation. Just a half game back now of the sixth seed Pacers. Uh, so I do think the Heat are going to continue to try and roll. Uh, their basketball they've been playing as of late has been pretty good. Um, they lose to the Philly, uh, the Philadelphia Sixers yesterday, a healthy Sixers team, which is kind of crazy. But they should be able to bounce back against a Houston team that uh, I'll keep saying it. Like, this Houston team, I need to see them bounce back from losses before we're going to, you know, uh, give them their flowers. Like, they went on an absolute tear. Ten games in a row, they won. I get it. 
against not very good teams. And if the team was good, it was an injured team that was good. So, yeah, I'm waiting out this Houston team, and we've kind of looked pretty good as of late. Like, bet against them with Dallas, cashed. Bet against them with Minnesota, pushed. And then bet against them last night with Golden State, and Golden State was injured, and they cashed. So it's like this Houston team, I need to see a little something from them. Uh, the one piece of, I guess, like, you know, credit I can give is the fact that both these teams are on back-to-backs, um, and Houston has been a far superior back-to-back team this season. So they have a little bit of an edge there, but this Miami team, man, I think that they're going to start grinding, and they do not like an Eastern Conference loss last night. I can tell you that much. So I'm expecting these guys to kind of come out with a little bit of fire. And Tyler Hero also listed as questionable in this spot, which is uh, interesting to note because he's been out for a while, uh, and he's now listed as questionable. I doubt he's supposed to come back because his original... Um, projection was mid-April. It's not mid-April yet, but maybe if they want to put the accelerator on, you know, are they saying let's get out of this this let's seventh seed and let's jump into uh, you know the, the sixth seed positioning and everything like that? Like, are you ready to come back? Who knows? This Heat team uh, is a grinded out type of a team. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they have some tough uh, mother, you know, what's over there. So give me the Heat here in this spot with all that being said. Uh, the spread right now is at two on some books, um, but two and a half on others. So if you get two, it's probably a good little uh, uh, pull. In terms of the total, I'll lean towards the under here as well. Uh, just haven't been seeing uh, crazy high scoring games out of this Heat team, which makes sense based on their defense. And if Houston's going to try and um, win games, they're going to try and play some defense because their scoring hasn't been all that crazy either when they play a quality opponent. Actually, real quick, a player prop that I don't mind there. It's going to be a guy that's kind of, not, not to say he's been burning us, um, but I don't mind Bam out of bios over in points plus rebounds or even his PRA. Uh, he cashed for us with our plays. We posted him on Instagram yesterday with his over 13 and a half rebounds plus assists. So that's great. But uh, yeah, I like Bam out of bio from a player prop perspective too. I like the matchup against Smith and Brooks down low for Houston. All right, Memphis taking on the Pistons, another game in which should just be an absolute instant classic. Like, how are we so lucky as humans that we get these types of games on a Friday night in the NBA? Last time they played was a couple days ago. Memphis wins this one 110 to 108. I don't see any reason why Detroit wants to, con to, to continue to win or anything like that. Um, Cade Cunningham's listed as out. Simone Fontecchio out. Taj Gibson out. Memphis obviously has their you know issues with injuries as well, but I'll take Memphis. They're at home here. Uh, total at 211 and a half. Toss a coin if you think it's going to be a defensive game or not. I'm going to lean towards the over here. Again, last time they played was 110 to 108. I could see something like that similar happening again because even if they play such bad defense, you're looking at uh, probably 105 plus uh, allowed, no matter, you know, depending on the opponent, obviously, but both these defenses, like their best defense is, is 105. Like they're not going to go down there and, and lock up and, and prevent someone from scoring 100 points, I feel like. So if you give me a minimum of 200 with some other points coming from other directions and whatnot, I'll slightly lean towards the over, but you can probably tell by my voice, not the game that we're probably going to dive deep into today. All right, Milwaukee taking on Toronto here. Uh, Milwaukee laying 15 and a half points. Damian Lillard and Giannis listed on the injury report, as is Kelly Olenek, RJ Barrett, and Gary Trent Jr. I do have a couple player props that I'm actually considering in this spot, so we'll get to those in just a second here. Um, but overall, this is not, like, my favorite game to take a peek at, right? Um, which makes sense. Like, this is another game in which Milwaukee, it's, like, too big of a number to lay with Milwaukee, but 15 and a half isn't even, like, something that Toronto's been good at covering lately. They're 50-50 to that line in their last 10 games here. I would probably take the points just because of you know the fact that Milwaukee I just don't see them covering and, and winning by 15 plus uh, so if you had a gun to my head I would lean Toronto there's some injuries like I said that we need to note uh, in, in that spot Barrett Gary Trent, Kelly Linen, like two, three of their five starters are injured here they already are down Barnes, Boucher, Pirtle, and Porter it's like all right this is probably a crappy game too if Giannis doesn't play and Lillard doesn't play 15 plus 15 and a half looks like a pretty good bet here. So it may be one that, you know, like I'm saying, it's not a good game, but it may be worth taking a stab as crazy as that is. Um, I'll also lean towards the over in this spot. You have Toronto who's been playing with a fast pace um, and scoring well in transition and Milwaukee who's a top 11 team in terms of their last 10 games of pace and Toronto's defense and transition is terrible. So if the guys are playing like, you know, Lillard and Giannis, they should be able to run all over Toronto and score a bunch of points. Again, that doesn't really hurt our spread pick because we're looking at potentially getting 15 points of, of you know wiggle room here for Toronto. Now, from a player prop perspective, let's jump back into outlier. Again, 
seven days free with the link in the pinned comment. Even after that, it's $19.99. Like that's per month, which is a really good deal. Um, Taking a peek at Gary Trent Jr., I like him in a few different ways. Uh, probably uh, the most looking at him over eight and a, 18 and a half points plus rebounds. Uh, he's averaging six rebound chances per game. And you could see if we filter the rebounds here, he's actually had some decent big rebounding nights. Uh, now against the Bucks, he hasn't looked all that great. Points plus rebounds looks a little bit better. So maybe it is just a spot in which we look at his over 14 and a half points, right? Um, again, to shooting guards, they kind of struggle against. He's injured though, or at least listed on the injury reports. We're going to want to wait that out. But this game, his fewest minutes played, he didn't score, right? So against Milwaukee, if he were to score, if we could filter the minutes here, say he's going to play 20 plus minutes or 20. Let's see. What did he play here? It was 23. So if he plays 25 plus minutes, he says hit that in four straight games against Milwaukee on the season, 25 plus minutes, 55%. And in his last 10, he has not missed that line when playing 25 plus minutes. So I like that spot for him. Another spot we're going to look at is old faithful Kelly Olenek under six and a half rebounds here. Um, he's obviously getting plenty more rebound chances, but 11.5 still to me should result in about five or six rebounds, which he's come very close multiple times. Uh, I think I'm going to go and fade him again um, in, in this spot. So yeah, two player props that actually she could make their way into final plays. Um, and for whatever reason, if, if we get injury news, maybe that Toronto plus 15 and a half sneaks its way in there as well. All right, Pelicans taking on the Spurs. We talked about this after we bet the Pelicans against the Magic on Wednesday. I'm kind of off the Pelicans. Like, they put a sour taste in my mouth uh, for sure. Um, in terms of what we're looking at here, it's like I don't even know if I uh, love the, the matchup. Zion's a game-time decision. Brendan Ingram's out. Alvarado's out as well. Uh, and you have San Antonio, who I'm not saying they're playing good basketball, but they just competed with the Nuggets, right? Um, and then... They competed with who they compete with before that. They've competed like three games in a row. They're they're uh, seven and three against the spread in their uh, the Warriors and Knicks. They're seven and three against the spread in their last ten games here. So uh, maybe they're trying to close out the season strong to some degree. I don't know why you would, but. Uh, you know, 11 and a half points, too much to lay as the Pelicans in my brain. This should be like a seven and a half point spread. So I'll take the Spurs plus the points. And again, we may not bet this because it's totally out of, uh, you know, out of spite almost against the Pelicans because they just stunk it up Wednesday night. Like I really was like, what are you guys doing? You know what I mean? So uh, it could be a spot in which I'm like, all right, we, we shouldn't emotionally bet this. But you know what? We could also say screw the Pelicans in a sense. Um, from a total perspective, 218, uh, if I think the Spurs are going to up the tempo. I think this does get to that number, but I do think that, you know, being smart here, not just going full bore into the Spurs, I'm probably going to lean towards the under, but if I were to make a, a play on either one of those, I'm much more likely to pull trig um, on the Spurs plus the points. We may even go alternate line, pay a little bit more juice and get them at like plus 13 and a half, something kind of crazy like that. Uh, from a player prop perspective, uh, we're going to look back to something that we have looked at many times this season. Uh, it's been less, uh, you know, cashy as of late, but uh, I don't mind Victor Wembanyama over two and a half uh, first quarter rebounds. I also don't mind his rebound on the game uh, the line's getting up there at 11 and a half but that being said it's a plus money play and I do think that obviously Valanciunas is a good um, rebounder and a big body but when Benyam is a little bit more nimble a little bit more side to side fast and he's long so I like his chances to kind of you know counter what Valanciunas does well and uh, again that's plus money a lot of sports books have it in the minus but FanDuel right now at plus money so Victor Wembanyama Benyam first quarter rebounds as well as game long rebounds for plus money could be a uh, player tonight as well. We got ourselves a little revenge spot here. We were big on the Dallas Mavericks taking on the Warriors the other night, right? And the Warriors got the best of them. Now the Warriors are on a back-to-back -back in which surprisingly they've actually covered in nearly 65 percent of their back-to-back -back games this year so i can't even sit here and see, say oh well they're on a back-to-back -back. they're gonna be tired blah 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 like no probably not but um uh this is a a dallas team that played what uh atlanta yesterday so there's the there's the the kind of counter to to both teams being on back-to-backs but here's where the little kicker is i just gave warriors their flowers for back-to-backs right so i can't say they're gonna struggle on back-to-backs but dallas 75 percent of their games this year on back-to-backs they have covered that's pretty good to see, you know what I mean? So uh, I like Dallas's spot here just in revenge uh, overall. I don't have any player props, which is kind of surprising because I thought that I'd find some that I really do like in this spot, but actually nothing really that I'm uh, obsessed with. Uh, but give me Dallas minus the points. I think they're the better team. I, I truly do. I thought they should have won the other night and they just kind of came out flat. Um, 
And this is obviously a Warriors team that's going to want to continue to, to win. Uh, they're down, I want to say, one and a half games to the Lakers for the nine seed. They're still going to be a play-in team no matter what, so maybe it doesn't matter as much for them. But this is a Mavs team that's only one game out of the play-in right now in the, in the five seed. So I do think that they're going to be like, all right, we got like, what, six games left in the year. Let's let's make sure we're not a play-in team and come out kind of strong, which the Mavs have been playing good basketball. They've won eight of their last 10 games, covered in eight of their last 10. So I wouldn't use that one Warriors loss a couple nights back to kind of sour us here. Um, in terms of a total, I do think that the game goes more according to how we saw it. Like that was like a playoff game. 104 to 101 is going to be uh, a, a 100. I think they might have scored, but a low scoring game. Nonetheless, I do think that that's going to be a similar type score today. I think Dallas comes to play more offensively, but even if this is like a, a 115 to, to 110 game, we hit an under, right? So I'm going to lean slightly towards the under. All right, Phoenix taking on Minnesota here. On the injury report, Nurkic is listed as questionable, and as is Grayson Allen. No Carl Anthony Towns still for the Timberwolves here in this spot. Uh, I think this is going to be a good game. Uh, you know, not, not breaking news to you. Everyone probably thinks it's going to be a good game, but Phoenix has dominated Minnesota as of late. They won the season matchup, uh, the only matchup they had earlier, 133-115, to 115, and they were at home again there. Um, I think Phoenix wins this game, but... I'm kind of on the fence. Like, this might be a spot in which I want to pull the trigger uh, for the uh, to, to get those points. Because if I think it's going to be a good game, a close game, and the total sitting down at 217, which I don't mind the under, um, by the way, uh, I, I could kind of convince myself of, yeah, I think Phoenix wins this game, but I'll take the four or four, more than four points in a close game. So my lean is Minnesota, but just know that it's kind of like a... Uh, a thin lean or something like a slight lean because I do think Phoenix uh, is the uh, the team that wins this game, but I just kind of want those extra points in my pocket here. Um, from player prop perspective here, uh, Bradley Beal, still a good look to me for over five and a half assists. Uh, he's averaging 11 potential assists over his last 10 games here. Um, his last five game series averaging just 9.4. It kind of drops, but that's because he had a bad game against OKC. Uh, his last two games, 13 and 11 potential assists. You have Minnesota who doesn't allow many assists to anybody in any position so I get that but at the same time there's such a good defense that if Bradley Beal has multiple times where he thinks he's going to catch the ball and want to score I do think that he's going to defer and pass and he's been doing that already a lot lately anyways so I like his over five and a half assists it depends on what the odds you can get if you can get it at like minus 110 I like it um, that's over on FanDuel right now other sportsbooks Caesars minus 165 BetMGM minus 145 DraftKings minus 140 those seem pretty fair but if you can get minus 110 over on uh, FanDuel if it's still out when you see this there's some value in that play there, of, uh, of course. All right, Clippers taking on the Jazz. Still no Kawhi Leonard. Um, he's going to remain out. Um, in terms of injuries for the Jazz, no Clarkson, no Markinen, no Collins, and even Walker Kessler now not listed in the starting lineup. Whether or not he plays, we shall see, but he definitely isn't starting or isn't starting that we, we think. Um, the Jazz have been abysmal, like abysmal, so... I'll lean towards the Clippers, but it's not something I'm going to bet. Too many points, in my opinion, to lay as the Clippers. Uh, you could date back to their last 10 games here and even go 12 and a half points for the Clippers, right? They've only covered that in one game, if you were to make that the spread for all of their games. So I just can't really get behind it. Now, the total sitting at 223. Um, what I can get convinced of isn't over because I don't think the Jazz are going to play a lick of defense. And I don't know if the Clippers are going to need to bring any defensive intensity to stop this Jazz team, you know what I mean? So I'll slightly lean towards the over as well. And from a player prop perspective, um, I will say the Clippers, you know, worth noting um, them being on a, uh, excuse me, as my spreadsheets go uh, nuts here, um, them being on a back-to-back, -back, that's probably worth noting. But again, we're not really uh, thinking about betting this to, to the most degree anyways. Um, but one player prop that we could kind of get behind is uh, fading James Harden. I know a lot of people uh, liked him for his assists yesterday, and he came up short. Now his line's up to nine and a half, and it makes sense why, because of you know him playing against uh, Utah and everything like that. But uh, I don't necessarily think that he's going to get the most run. And even if he gets you know twenty potential assists, there's still a chance he doesn't come up with ten assists. So the fact that that line moved up from yesterday, a line that he didn't hit. I don't necessarily hate uh, the the thought of him, you know, having a good assist night, nine assists almost, and, you know, and like still catching an under. So that's a player prop that we think about there. But uh, guys, it's going to wrap it up for today's show. Again, happy Friday. Hope you guys did enjoy the show. If you did, hit that like button. If you made it this far into the video, go ahead and comment 29. You made it to the 29 minute mark. Uh, shout out to all the guppies yesterday. We got so many comments being like, you talk too much in your videos. Well, let me hand it over to my co-host, okay? Why don't you talk some?
It's so dumb to hear that type of thing. But guys, appreciate everyone tuning in. If you made it this far, that's why I bring up that story. It means that you're a real one and you made it this far. So go ahead and comment 29 in the comments. And we'll catch you guys in the next one, right? Peace out.